Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. I've been working on passion projects for a good year or two now, and I have to say it's an overwhelming process to figure out where to even start. I probably have 20 separate projects going on at the moment, and I've had to tone it down and just focus on one for the time being. Admittedly, you're always going to have more ideas than you're ever going to be able to create, but it's nice to write them down so that you can come back to them later. It took me a long time and many, many checklists to boil this down to a clear path to going about creating. I really rely heavily on a curriculum or a system when I go about creating projects, and I hope to help out some of you guys that are the same way. I want to start off by saying that this is formed around an animated passion project, but it certainly can be used for comics or any other creative process. There just will be less steps involved. I warn you ahead of time as well that this is very loose in the creating process, and it's only you who can make the final decision on what you believe is best for the storytelling of your project. First, there's the idea. Now this is generally one of my favorite parts of the creating process. I think this is generally one of the easier steps, but I do have a couple helpful things to help projects come to mind if you're struggling a little bit. One of the most helpful things I've found is questions. Questioning the world around you. All ideas have to come from somewhere. Find what interests you in this world. Wonder about it. Next up is story building. Now that you have a concept, a baseline idea, now it's time to start to flesh it out. Give it some character. Fill it with characters. I consider this process to still be completely in the realm of thought. We're not putting anything down on paper quite yet. This is the point where you give yourself time to consider who's the protagonist, who are your characters, what are the locations, villains, conflict. What is going on inside your world? This point in the process is very pliable. It's going to change a lot. It's going to change throughout the entire process, but this is definitely where it's the most plastic. I know I personally have characters that have developed far past their original state. After that, we'll move on to experimental writing, character designs, and naming. This is where you actually start to put things out. It's good to keep everything in one place, even if you don't use it later on in the process. It's good to know where it is to look back on it later if needed. I usually like to write down little interactions between my characters. I like to start working and exploring character designs at this time as well, but keep in mind that these will probably still change from here. Either way, this time in development is all just a test drive. Feel free to explore and pick out what you like best and develop it more later on. Afterwards, a very important step in the process is events. This is a very important part to the creating process. Events are what make things move forward and it's good to note and list out events that are absolutely necessary to keep the story moving forward. You don't need to organize these in any particular order yet. Just get out all the key events that happened in a way that you can remember. These should be events that are essential to the plot moving forward smoothly. It would be very difficult to figure out how Harry Potter got to Hogwarts if it wasn't for the part where he met Hagrid. Keep in mind scenes like these, and if you need guidance, watching or reading some of your personal favorites and taking note of important turning points can help. After this, we have the timeline where we'll be organizing the events. Now it's time to organize all these events in chronological order. If your story is layered and complicated, you might even have more than one timeline. How you organize is entirely up to you, so long as it helps you keep the story on track. This is not to say your episodes or characters will necessarily fall in this order, although they certainly could. It is just to keep things organized and in line for the time being. This is generally a quick step unless you have a lot of plot points and timelines going on. After that, there's character sheets. This is generally one of my least favorite parts of the process. I don't know why, but I just can't stand drawing them in neutral states four times. This part can generally be skipped if you're writing a short story or novel, unless you hope to have visuals present. But even then, you might be commissioning an artist and they would have to figure out what works best for them in completing the work. Character sheets are important when trying to keep character designs consistent, especially if you're working with other people. It should be giving a full design of your character from the front, back, sides. This is to show the full 3D figure of the character as they move in a 3D space. This is true for both comics and animation, as both storytellings require a character to move instead of being a stagnant 2D image from only the front. Next on is emotion sheets. I personally like to draw these underneath the character sheets. These, in my opinion, aren't usually as important unless your character has some distinctive feature only present in certain emotions or circumstances. For example, I have one character where you only ever really see their eyes when they're emotional or upset. 
This is an important thing to represent and to give to fellow animators in the project so that the character has consistent movements and emotions. There really is no concrete max or minimum to how many expressions you should draw. It just needs to be properly representing the character. After that are character lineups or a height comparison chart. This just helps you and others visualize the discrepancy in height between characters. I usually just like to take the front view of all the characters and put them side by side. It is always a good idea to have a diverse range in character heights. It's far more visually appealing to the eye and mind to have a diverse cast rather than one that is too similar of a group. Moving on, you have logo design. Even for novels and comics, this is a very important part to people recognizing your project. It can often be the title of the project, but give it some character. Even for novels and comics, this is an important part to people recognizing your project. It can often just be the title of the project, but give it some character. They might not give you a lot or any insight to what the project is about, but they help give the project character. Next up, there's concept art. These are just to help get an idea across or visualize a location or event within your story. In my opinion, these are optional unless you're trying to make a design of a location consistent when working with other people. But to be quite honest, that can be left to the next segment, location design. As previously mentioned, this is like character sheets. It's important in order to have consistency. It's nice to have different angle views, outside and inside views. This is really more for comics and animations but if you have a frequently visited location, it is best to keep it consistent. The next step is making a map. This can be really loose and it doesn't need to be fancy. Mine personally is a piece of paper with doodles on it. The only real purpose of the map is to present where locations are relative to one another. This might not be important if your story is more sketch based or less location slash event based. It's more of a visualization for you to plan around with. Next up is a theme song. Like a logo, this is an important and helpful tool to have people remember your project. Even a slight glimpse or a second will have your project come to mind. This isn't really present in writing or comics, so no worry there. You'll still have the cover and logo to stand on. The theme song should also help set the mood of the project. If your project is about a time traveler, Make it whimsical. If you're making a kid's show, you're not going to make a dark or somber theme song. You're going to write something fun and upbeat, like the Spongebob theme song. Intro and outros. Intros are kind of covered by the theme song, though you might want to have a recap or a teaser at the start of the episode. Something to grab the people's attention and to convince them to stay with you. This can happen before or after the theme song. This part of the process is unfortunately pretty loose. It's entirely up to you. I advise you to review and watch projects you love and are similar to what you're going for in order to get a better idea and understanding of what you think is best for your storytelling. As for the outro, this can be a cliffhanger, a quick goodbye. I also advise you to review other projects to get an understanding and idea of what will work best for you. If you're working with other people, it is imperative that you list all those who worked on the project and their role. Walk cycles. If I'm being quite honest, I skip these. These can be really important if you're trying to check that your character works in motion, how they move, and represent their overall tone as a person. Just like everything else, their actions, movement, and walk represent them and show their personality. This is generally just for animation. Script writing. It is of the utmost importance to keep this organized. I personally like to keep a folder for each project, inside of which I have a doc for each episode. Use your timeline during the writing process. Keep your interactions and quotes close by and figure out if they'll work. Choose which ones to put in and which ones to leave out. You may not work in a linear path, and that's okay. You have to work with yourself. Don't get caught up trying to work from episode to episode in order if it's holding you back from working at all. In the end, you will have to go back and finish those up, but it's always important to work with your passion while you have it. One side note, if you're working with others and making an animation, I advise you to write this in screenplay format. It will help things be closer to your vision than just hoping they get the idea and personalities of your characters through just the lines alone. After that, there's script edit. At this point, you should generally read in order. This will help to check that everything flows well and in the order you intended. Make sure there are no plot holes. I would make another list writing down things you wish to change or change them in the moment if it's an easy enough problem to fix. If it's not an easy problem to fix, take note of the issue and go back. Try to figure out what you can change to fix it, what you need to rewrite, and is it still a satisfactory outcome? Next is storyboarding or episode layout. 
Think about the angle and the scene. Storyboarding is where your characters really come to life. You are setting up the characters and environments. This can just be through rough sketches. It's really just to get the basic idea across so that you can use them as keyframes later on in animation. You want to make sure the scenes are interesting in order to keep the viewers interested. Try not to keep things too stagnant. Even with screenplay format, someone may have interpreted things differently than you had in your head. If you have a very precise vision, you might want to do this part yourself. Just be aware that this is very time consuming and is by no means a quick process. After that, you're on to the pilot or episode. Let's get to know your characters and setting. Where does it take place? There should be great mysteries, story, and adventure ahead. Next on is merch. To me, this part can be skipped, but if you're really making a big project, it seems to be an unfortunate necessity. I personally don't like the idea of merch too much, only because of its environmental impact. It's not exactly the best for the world to mass produce things and then ship them 5,000 different directions. This is just a thing you should add new designs and products to every once in a while, just to keep things flowing. The real big choice you have to make is whether to work as an independent seller or post designs on a site like Teespring. The nice thing about sites like Teespring is you don't have to worry about inventory, shipping, or product complaints. However, you only get a portion of the profit. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you don't get to choose your materials. You don't get to manage your own quality control. Promotional posters! This helps build a buzz around your project and gets people talking about it. You can drop clues or production dates. This isn't a necessary step, but can help get things moving and have people start getting hyped or excited for your project. Posting your art and characters, as well as updates, can help with this as well. Don't feel like you need to go too out of your way to make these. You can make it a movie poster or just text. Trailers. Again, entirely up to you whether or not you make a trailer or how many you make. I personally am making one for Murder in Mayoville in order to give viewers a vague idea of what the project is about and hopefully cause hype. This part of the process is entirely up to you, but it should present your story in an interesting way without spoiling too many things. Try not to be too vague, but also don't give away the whole plot. Promote. Now that you've made or started your project, let everyone know. It wouldn't do you much good to just create and hope people stumble into your project. That is unless you're making your project just for fun or for yourself. Not everything needs an audience. You don't need to share this if you don't want to. This is just important if you hope to gain an audience or to let existing viewers know what's happening. Post on your other media platforms. You can also do ads on Instagram or YouTube, but this has frequently shown that it's an ineffective way of leading people to your account. Clicks are low and people often don't stay on your account even if they do visit. The only real benefit of ads is to build a brand or awareness of your existence, but this has to be hammered and presented several times to a viewer. Last, post your episode. You've worked hard to get to this moment. You've made quality and consistent work. Maybe you even promoted it. Now it's time for the final step, to post it into the world. Have a good cover or thumbnail, and be sure to be consistent with these and titles. You may not have people rushing to you, but you have the culmination of your hard work realized and present in front of your eyes. Congratulations, for you have made it. Other advice. Anything is better than nothing. This has been a motto I've been following for a little while now. What I mean by this is any amount of work towards your goal is better than no progress at all. It's important to reward yourself for what you have accomplished and not to punish yourself for what you haven't. I find this especially helpful as a person who sets unrealistic goals for myself. Most of the time, the lists I create are physically impossible to all accomplish in one day. It can also be a helpful outlook if you struggle with estimating the time it takes to accomplish certain tasks. Don't be afraid to take breaks. In the short term, it might seem like a setback, but it's going to help you in the long run. I hope this helps some of you guys have a clearer direction on how to approach your projects. This, of course, isn't the only way to approach starting a project, but it helps me to have structure within my work. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!